Poodle Bud here. I got my Visconti Homo Sapiens back from the grind from Mr. Mark Bacchus at over at the Nib Grinder. Sent me a cool. Oh, look at the ref, look at that. Where we're getting action there. Got me the mango chutney sticker, and to seal the deal, little detail. He gets you a mango candy with your pen as well. But anyways, so I've had this pen for a long time, and I haven't used it for a long time because I hated the nib. Too wet, too fat. Dry time was forever, and i uh, just been frustrated, but I got it back. Haven't even used it yet, saving it to do on video. My restraint has been phenomenal. But now we're going to ink it up, check it out. We're going to get under the microscope, see how this writes now. So for those of you who are new to the game or don't know much about fountain pens, what is a nib grinder or a nib meister, as they're called sometimes? That is someone who just spends all day long looking at fountain pen nibs in particular the tip of a nib and what they do is they tune and adjust them because us fountain pen fanatic folks are very picky and particular with our fountain pens and how they write and this one just wasn't writing the particular fanatical way i wanted so it needed some adjustment but in this case i i will grind pens i you see me do it but this one needed a grind that i just i needed to send it off to a professional to do and I reached out to Mark Bacchus and I was reluctant to do it one because I did send off another pen to someone else before and they totally messed it up the pen I'm referring to that I sent off for a nib grind was this bad boy my Mont Blanc 149 got a super skookum deal on it very happy with the pen and I got it and the nib was terrible comes with a fine nib just barely wouldn't even write at all and uh yeah i just was not happy with it maybe that's why i got such a deal on it was a new old stock no one would pay that much money for this pen with a bad nib like that so i sent it off to someone i want to say who is here locally though in canada and i wanted as cursive as italic as you could get for a fine nib and just improve the flow make it right nicely and i sent it off got it back and it was like almost no improvement <laughs> it was pretty terrible i thought if someone's gonna screw up a nib it might as well be me and uh, not cost me anything so although i it's sort of a silver lining to the cloud that bad grind got me into learning how to tune and grind nibs myself and so i tried on a cheap dummy pen a little three dollar special first ground it the way i liked it went pretty well so i moved on to this one and ground that pen so why didn't i do the same to this well that's a completely different task on this pen i needed to reshape it so doing a cursive italic grind is you know it's not easy but it's an easy grind to do making this one smaller is very tough it, it this was a fine nib it wrote like a broad almost um and just super super wet so i couldn't do this grind with the gear i got what you essentially have to do is you have a ball and then you need to make that ball smaller well i guess just do like this make the right you got something you need to reduce its size that means you got to shave off material from all angles and just make that ball smaller and symmetrical that is very hard to do especially with hand stones that i have so that was out of my league and needed to enlist the help of a professional so enough with the chitter chatter let's ink this pen and see how it goes and we'll talk a little bit more and do some stories and i think i'll do an updated review of this pen because i haven't uh, haven't used this this is like new to me i haven't used it in years because it's just been sitting around and i've been frustrated but here we go just before i ink the pen i thought i would go under the microscope just to give you a few close-ups of the tipping material just the end of the nib here so you can have an idea of what it looks like top and bottom and from all angles and uh, I got to say, that's really nice and smooth. <laughs> he blended that just perfectly. The alignment, the grind, the tuning of it as well. I can tell already before I ink this, I think I'm really going to be in for a treat and be super happy with this. I was just about to ink the pen. I picked out this Monteverde Fire Opal, but then I cracked the bottle. I just see all that crud that's not on the inside, it's on the outside. And you open it on this page here and then like there's just crud everywhere and i thought you know i don't want to put that in my pen i know i can flush it out but uh it's a you know it's a vac filler so getting like a hundred percent cleaning out is a bit of you know it's not as easy as other pens i know i could flush it out but i just thought i don't i don't want crud in, in my new pen 
So DC Super Show 2018 it is. Let's see how this one looks. Much better. You can see it's got a little sheen to it. It's got some great shading as well. It's really, really good for shading ink. So this one, you just slide it back. There we go. Put in the nib, depress the plunger, and you leave it for a few seconds. This is such a nice looking nib. This is the Palladium Two-Tone. Absolutely gorgeous. Here is the moment of truth for Mr. Mark Bacchus over at Nib Grinder. Let's see how this thing goes. So I gotta say, that is more like it. I'll uh, show you the writing sample. So how it works with Mark, he would answer a bunch of questions on his site. So I, I had a proper writing sample and then I left it at home before I went to mail the, the pen off. So I had a, a, the wrong pen at my office by just chicken scratch something really quick. So this is, you know, sort of how I wanted this pen to write. And this is how he came out. So as you can see, pretty if you can focus. Pretty darn close. So this was just another fine nib pen above that I wanted. If you can make it right like that, I'd be pretty happy with it. And the wetness is, is really good. Like I was happy with the wetness off that pen. He's giving me this similar kind of wetness that I like versus this was it before. So here is the before picture. Uh, I'm going to do a writing sample right underneath so we can just compare. There was nothing wrong with it. As you can see, it looks okay. Just way thicker than I wanted, but mainly the wetness. Like you can only have written on premium paper with this pen. I don't get to do that very often. We're going to do other paper as well, and I'll show you. And I'm I'm hoping this is going to work on that cheaper paper too. So here's the before, and some of you might be totally okay with that, but this was supposed to be a fine. And this is the after. So I, I just wanted a nice fine nib on this pen. And that is working out just perfectly. It's got a nice little bounce to it. You can get some line variation. Not a flex pen. You try to flex this, you're going to mess up the nib. But it has a nice little give, a nice little bounce to it. It's a fine line and it's very smooth. The flow is just perfect. This is exactly exactly what I was wanting. And this is sort of what Mark does as well. When I got that, well, I didn't get the pen right away. I got a notification. I got an email from Mark and he did a video. So there he was. He goes, hey, doodle bud, got your pen. Here's the writing sample you provided. And here's the pen. So he went through, you would watch him just like you watch me writing and using the pen. He would compare with what I sent with what he was able to pull off. And uh, just would talk about it as maybe a two and a half, three minute video or something like that. And then he just asks, hey, listen, if there's something you don't like, if it's off a touch, whatever, let me know. Uh, and he can adjust accordingly as well. And so uh, th th that was wicked. Like you got to sort of see it before you get it. You know, I still have my fingers crossed. That was what I wanted. But yeah, that was super helpful. So that's a great service that he does. And I paid for this, by the way. He didn't do this for me for free. I sent it. I waited just like everybody else. Um, so I'm not trying to pump his tires and promote his business because I got a free pen grind. I paid for this for my own pen. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, for anyone else who's out there and has a pen and you're kind of nervous about sending it off, maybe from a, a bad experience before or just not sure if you're going to get what you want, uh, the process was great. And I, it looks like I got exactly what I wanted here. So the other thing I was hoping was to be able to use this pen on some cheaper paper. This I found at Nakaido, which is in Steveston, just below Richmond here in BC. And this book was on for five bucks. I like the size of the book as well. And you know, I don't know what it was called. It's just like Hepta, but I've been using it for my fountain pens. 
And again, you can't use it for really wet pens. So it does have its limits, but it's nice. It's affordable, nice size. Hoping it's not gonna go too crazy on there. I might get a little bit of bleed through or a little bit of feathering. And here's a couple of sheets of some Muji paper that I use in my refillable Muji notebook. I use this book a bunch. So I'm hoping again, I can use this pen on these papers. So let's have a quick closer look here. You can see that's holding up pretty good. There's just a touch of feathering on some of them, but that is a fairly wet ink as well. And on the Muji paper here, again, that's looking pretty good. Just a little bit of feathering. Some, you know, my wetter pens do as well. And this is a fairly wet ink, but I'm very happy with that. If I tried that on the old nib the way it was it'd be toast i'm going to quickly show you. i found an old writing sample just to show how different the nib is now and then we'll get on and we'll do a mango chutney okay here we go this is the homo sapien when i first had it bronze age the fine nib so let's get you looking at that i'm going to do a writing sample right underneath this and you'll see the difference in this pen okay so maybe now you understand the magnitude <laughs> of the difference with this pen. I don't know what ink I was using on there. The washout sort of reminds me of Mont Blanc Royal Blue, cause that one kind of fades quite a bit, but just look at the difference in that pen. I actually recently, I got this vintage Pilot Elite and it has a fine nib and I really, really enjoying this pen. The nib is quite nice, nice fine line, has a little bit of bounciness and spring to it. And I really love it so much, I thought, you know, my Visconti being a little bit bigger, so if I want a bigger pen, I, I enjoy using this one, but if I want something bigger, if I could have a nib that writes like this one does on here, and I think we got the ticket. So as amazing as it did with the mango chutney in regular order, and I'd had the Pilot Elite to compare, this one's a little chunky. I checked after the writing sample, there was some uh, paper or something between the tines, but it, the Pilot does write better than that normally. But look how good that mango chutney is. But then the reverse, like that is the most phenomenally performing reverse writing pen I've ever come across. That writes better in reverse than a whole lot of pens out of the box in regular ways. So that is just blows my mind. I cannot be any happier with this pen. So, hey, I hope that's helped other people out there in fountain pen land who have a pen that they wanna get ground and they're unsure, is it gonna be worth it? Are you gonna get what you want? I can't speak for everyone. Mark isn't perfect. He even says that, if I need to tweak it, just let me know, I'm, I'm a human being, right? But damn, I'm super impressed with this. So cold feet are gone now on sending a pen out to get to ground. It was totally worth it. I have a brand new pen. This is a you know new old stock to me now because it was just sitting there and I didn't use it. So on that note, what I'm going to do now, if you, if you care to watch, I'm just going to do a quick little updated review on the pen because this is almost a new pen to me. And uh, you can check this out if you feel like it. If not, I hope... You have enjoyed what I showed you. If you have any questions in the comment, but the biggest questions would be just reach out to Nib Grinder, get yourself a little candy with your pen. I've even talked to Mark about us potentially, if we can swing it, a little collab video, maybe a 20 minute talk about nibs, do's and don'ts, how grinds work, expectations, because I'm sure there's us, the customer, and then there's reality that he's got to deal with. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I'm going to switch over, do a little bit of a review on this pen to update things. If you don't stick around for that, thanks for watching my video.
guess I'm doing the review a little bit out of order and backwards, but that's okay. In case you haven't noticed, this is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age, and this is the Maxi, the larger size. There is, a, I think it's the Meaty, is the smaller kind of medium size pen. So not a cheap pen by any means. This is made from volcanic rock that comes from Mount Etna in Italy. So how do you make a pen out of volcanic rock from an active volcano? Well, you gather the rock, you're gonna have to crush it up and mix it with a custom blend of resin. There's gonna be a lot of trial and error and R&D and experimentation with that. So that goes into the price of this pen as well. But you can see here, it's very porous, which is very interesting. It's a very porous rock. I, I think I think on its own it's just like called volcanic rock. If it comes up through fissures, it's igneous rock. Or so, I think that's something like the difference. I'm not a geologist, but if you've ever hold, held volcano rock or seen it, you've probably all seen it. it's very porous as well. So that's a you would never think of using that material to make a pen, but they did. So that must have taken a lot of work, especially to get features like this. So this has a very unique capping mechanism on there. You could put that into other pens, no problem. But with like a resin, yeah, you. I, th I think you essentially have to form this in here. I'm trying to see just the markings on here. Was this machined in afterwards? It, I'm not quite sure on that. I think this is probably done into the mold when they form this pen. So you have to come up with your own techniques to make this pen. So it's got some very, very unique uh, features to it as well. I'll do just a you know couple of little quick things on it. You've seen how it's written everything else as well. So can give you some details. It has a lovely spring clip. So this is the bronze age. So these are bronze uh, accoutrement, let's say. As far as rings and cap, you got this little end finial here as well. This comes off with a magnet. It's magnetic, so it pops off. You can get your own special initials in there if you want or turn it whichever way you enjoy as well. This is off, I think it's like Ponte Vecchio in uh, in Italy, the very famous bridge. It's kind of mimicked after that as well. Um, you got a cap liner in there. You can see it's it's just right down in there. That's on a spring, so that does touch up against here to give you a nice seal. I've never had this pen hard start, especially when I had it because it was mega wet. And uh, it goes in there, but just gives that nice resistance. So this is like, I don't know, an eighth of a turn or something to open the pen. So it's a very secure system. You can see that spring in action, so it's it's sealing up the pen quite nicely, but it gives a nice spring feel when you go to use it. One thing with this pen you got to watch out for um, is just how that edge goes in there. Let's see if we can turn the flash on. Okay, you can see a little better now. So it's just that cap, that, that part there. Oh, if we can get the focus, just stay there. So as I'm pointing to that, that slides up and down in the pen. It's on a spring. But what can happen is you could put the pen in, you can see here the nib can hit that. So if someone's being careless or you didn't know of it or just whatever, you weren't paying attention or someone else wasn't, if you let them use the pen and they get in there and catch it, whether they jam it in there or they're just, you're getting it at the side, you can clip the nib on that and you could have a really, really bad day uh, if you do that. So that's just something to watch out for with the pen. Just be cautious. I love the capping mechanism. But just when you're first putting the nib in, watch out for that cat. We'll take you around. And another gorgeous part of the pen is this nib. So this is a 23 karat palladium nib. They have switched to gold nibs. And, you know, I was fairly new into fountain pens. And I heard that there was just a lot of trouble with these nibs. I can contest to that. When I got mine, I knew there was baby bottom. The seller I got it from, I got this used. So I got a pretty reasonable price on this. And even cheaper because the guy was like, yeah, there's, there's, it's got some bad babies bottom. It has troubles with writing and hard starting. So I managed to negotiate a discounted price. It had babies bottom. I fixed that. I corrected it, but it was so severe that, you know, it ended up writing a little bit wider as well. It was still way too wide and wet when I got it, but it's getting rid of the babies bottom did make it that way. So that's why I ended up sending the pen off, but let's take you through so you can see those little hook loop system that they call it inside of the pen you can see those right there there'll be a number of those i think five or six of them whatever it is um, that catch into those so it's a very simple system positive locking you got an over center mechanism so it comes in you compress the spring it drives it back up and it catches in there as well so it's going to stop from popping out of that groove but they just slope that just perfectly for a nice you know 
clicky clicky turn to action so very good job on there nice attention to details the bands on here they're filled with a black paint or a lacquer or something you can see came off of that one a little bit there looks super super nice you go along you can see more porous nature of the body and then we have the filling system as i sh showed you at the start of the video you draw it off plunge it and uh, fill that way just like your other vac systems as well but just a super beautiful pen it does change color it gets a little bit uh, sleeker the more you use it it picks up because this this material is uh hydroscopic so that means it attracts liquids and moisture and stuff like that it does soak up some stuff so it changes if you want to clean it i've i've also just put it in my ultrasonic cleaner you can see the stuff come out of the pores you can maybe give a little scrub with some soap or if you really wanted maybe even like a little baking soda to get some of the stuff up. I mean, if you had a stain or something like that um because it will take that but you can even see up here near the section you know if i scrub this a little bit more you can see a little stain it's just from years gone by but it's black so it, you don't notice it as much that might drive you nuts this doesn't bother me at all it the pen is super unique as it is so i, I thoroughly enjoy it it does post you know very securely but it is way too long and way too back heavy to do that it is plenty large enough uh to use unposted and that's you know the way i use it but just very comfortable natural feel these don't bother me at all it's a very nice material if i want to freshen it up like i said i can just chuck it into the ultrasonic cleaner or uh, just you know scrub it up a little bit let it dry and you'll see it turns almost like a grayish color, like an ashy gray. And you'll even see some little like kind of white. You can see some specks in there too, but those become more prominent. Some little specks and flecks that are in the pen as well. But now that it's writing nicely, I got to say, I, I, I'm so happy to have it back up and running, running again. It's just too nice of a pen to not use. And so finally, after enough frustration, I realized, let's just send it off and get the pen fixed. And I... Oh, I'm super happy with this thing now. So for comparison in size, here are some other premium pens. Custom A23 Pilot M805. Got the Visconti here, and that's a Mont Blanc 149. And now the exact same pens lined up off the back of the pens there with the caps off. So you can see they're all fairly close in size. The 149 you can see is a little bit thicker. It's got the larger nib as well. We're losing focus between the caps and the pens there as well. Sorry about that. But size-wise, fairly close with the pens. So there we go. Just a quick review comparison of the pen as well. Like I said, super happy with the pen now. The new modern ones, it's a gold nib. And there's even some that have an ink window on it. Oh, don't roll away on me and get bent right now. But it has an ink window on the pen so you can see into it, into that ink reservoir. It's a good idea. But just, you know, from a personal preference standpoint, I'm not a fan of it. It just doesn't go with the overall design as well. I understand the functionality of it, but you're sort of sacrificing the design. Now, should this pen for this price have worked perfectly out of the box? Absolutely, it should have. It is ridiculous that you spend that kind of money, and I spent even less on it. Someone else spent the brand new money on this pen. And it's not perfect out of the box as far as writing goes. You can get a five or ten dollar pen. <laughs> it, it it wrote, but it was just ridiculous. So you know you can you can get a nice little pen pretty cheap, and not have those types of issues. So that is, you know, I hope it's resolved now with the gold nibs. I haven't heard as as much complaints, but this was sort of notorious with the palladium nibs. But I got to tell you, once it's running, it is spectacular in true Italian form, sort of like a Ferrari. V12, 12 Weber carbs, man, to get that thing running perfect, it, it, ta it takes the 40-year-old mechanic and his team of buddies to get it purring just right, but when it does, there's nothing else like it. So really happy this is back in the rotation now. This will be going in my coveted two-pen case. We'll have to see who I'm going to pair it with, but thanks again for watching. I am planning to do a bit of a comparison of some high-end pens that I have in case you're in the market for some top pens I'll get them together chat a little bit about them so maybe that'll help you in your decision process if you're looking at a nice upgrade in your pen arsenal anyways we'll leave it there for now happy with the mango chutneys blown away by that reverse writing 
And thanks again, Mr. Mark Bacchus, for your magical hand. And that's, he's bringing back the term Nibmeister. That's a term that doesn't really get used much anymore, a meister. And it's sort of a way back in the day, I had an extensive talk with this topic with uh, Dan Gelbert when we sat down. We had a very fascinating conversation. He brought that up that, you know, people that work with their hands and have this super skilled trade, whether it was you know, some types of craftsmen or something like that, that was the way to make that trade still have some sort of prestige to it versus now it's if you have a degree, you have a PhD or something, then you're regarded as, you know, prestigious and, and people envy that versus, oh, you work with your hands. No, like very skilled mechanics and people who build watches and all those type of stuff, they maybe they didn't get some engineering degree or something like that, but damn it, they know their craft so well. And, you know, back in the day, you got that term as a meister because you were revered for your skill. People knew you were the person that could do it. No one had that touch and that skill set that you have racked up over years and years and just thousands of hours of experience. So um, when it comes to tune and nibs, yeah, I can I can adjust one and tune one and grind one. But there is levels to this stuff. And I got to tell you, Mark is on a whole other level and he should be because this is all he does so the term nibmeister holds true and it's well earned good job mark thanks for the pen and we'll catch everybody next time